Hi guys, so today we're gonna to talk about something that I'm really passionate about and that's feature flags. And specifically, feature flag maintenance. So we already know what a feature flag is. It allows you to separate your code deployment from your feature release. And by doing this, we can do things like test in prod, A-B testing, you can have a kill switch for your features, um, you can do things like subscription management where you have specific permissions that are inside feature flags. You can migrate your monolith to microservices safely with feature flags. Um, they allow you to do a lot of things. And I want to take a look at the feature flag lifecycle today and talk about best practices for each part of the lifecycle. So we're going to start with creation. And the first step in feature flag creation is to create a naming convention. There's a few options you can choose from. You can do things like include your ticket number inside of the name of your feature flag. So if you use Jira or Asana or whatever ticketing system, you can have that ticket number inside the name of your feature flag. You can also include the name of the service that your feature flag is for. You can include the name of the team that the flag belongs to. You can include the name of the functionality. So what is your feature flag doing? Um, what is your feature flag trying to test? What are you rolling out? These are some options. Some more things to think about would be to engage with the different stakeholders on your team to identify something that makes sense for all of your teammates. And just make sure that there's clear ownership um, when you create this flag to reduce friction later on. And if you don't have a concrete naming convention in place, it's like when you have siblings and your mom goes through every sibling before she correctly identifies you. Like my name is Talia and my brothers are Trevor and Tyler. So um, when I would get in trouble as a kid, my mom would go, Trevor, Tyler, Talia. Like she would say me last, like she would go through all of her kids before she got to the right one. So you don't want to have to do that with your feature flags. You want to be able to look at a flag and know what it's doing, who it's for, um, and you don't want to have to go through every single one. And just remember that consistency is key here. So if you start out with one naming convention, be sure to keep that consist consistency throughout your project to avoid confusion. The next step is implementation. So changes to your feature flag should be treated like code deploys. So if you require two code reviews for your code base before someone gets to merge their code to master, you should also have two reviews for any configuration changes to your feature flags. Although you're not writing code in the feature flag system itself, the changes you make here directly impact your users in production. So you want to be careful. And by having the same approval process here, you can prevent people from making a, con a change to the configuration that they don't own or that they meant to make for a different flag. You also don't want to change the scope of your components just to support feature flagging decisions. So your feature flagging decisions should be encapsulated as much as possible, thereby avoiding the need for every part of your code base to be aware of every component. In terms of testing your, your feature flags and testing the features that are inside of your flags, you want to work with your product owner to prioritize what the most important flows are. And once you have that list and you know which combination of feature flags are the most important, you can use your automation users and target them inside whatever combination of flags that you need to validate your test cases. The next step is rollout. So users should consistently have the same experience. So if you're in the process of rolling out a feature and a user visits your site or application and your feature flagging system decides that the treatment should be on for that user, then every time the user goes to that site, they should have the same experience. So increasing exposure to a feature should not affect the current exposed population. You also want to build a feedback loop within your system. So feature flags allow you to make controlled changes to your, to your system and to your application. And we can then observe the impact of these changes and make adjustments as necessary. If you turn on a feature for half of your population and your metrics are showing a decrease in activity, then you should kill that feature and adjust as necessary. On the flip side, if the metrics show a high conversion rate, you should keep that change and roll it out to everyone. So it's important to use the data from your feature flagging system to measure if you can move from a smaller percentage rollout to a bigger percentage rollout or vice versa. You also want to set up alerts to page you when you get any statistically significant changes. So if your business metrics are really being badly impacted by any change, you should be getting more violent alerts through PagerDuty or whatever application that you use. And on the flip side, if you get neutral or positive results, then maybe you can just set up like an email alert or something a little bit less aggressive. So this is how you can measure the impact of your change. So think about that. 
Feature flagging allows you to directly correlate the impact of your changes by pushing information about the feature flags to the internal analytics system. And your business decisions should be based off of data, right? And using a smart feature flagging system will give you that data to have a su successful business. And it's not magic, guys. It's just feature flags. So the last step of the feature flagging process is removal. You definitely don't wanna be stuck with 100 feature flags that serve their purpose and then we're just forgotten about. So something super useful you can do when thinking about removing a flag is assigning an expiration date for each flag. You can also set up alerts in your flagging system that will poke you when a flag is stale or hasn't had impressions in a while. Another helpful thing to do is to add a subtask to your backlog to retire the flag at the same time the flag is created. So when you create the ticket in your backlog to create the flag, make sure you also create a ticket to delete the flag once you reach your definition of done. Another thing that you want to do is make sure that you remove the old code when you delete the feature flag. So you don't want to have stale code in your code base, that's just a bad practice. And that's it guys, thanks for tuning in. And here's my contact info, um, my Twitter handle, and my email address in case you have questions.